Shibumi means creative restraint. If there's no restraint, then we start getting so creative. It means our insecurity comes out. The master doesn't get creative. The master just does. Welcome. Good evening. Couple cuisine, it means cooking and cutting in front of the guests. The other thing that couple has to have is basically the forms of kaiseki cuisine, in which you have something raw, steamed, boiled, fried, and grilled. I was drawn to kapo ryori because I realized that uh, kaiseki was really daunting, just for myself, period. I was told a very great statistic. 90% of Japanese restaurants in the United States have sushi on the menu. Also, 90% of Japanese restaurants in Japan do not have sushi on the menu. What does that mean? Well, we don't serve sushi here. Here we have the uh, wild moray eel. They're coming from Oita in Kyushu. We receive moray eel maybe about once a year. The moray eel is um, is quite the gangster of fish in which it is in the top of the food chain, in which most fish won't even go near it. Some of the varieties are quite poisonous. They are very vicious, very muscular, very, very fast, and quite camouflage. The moray eel is, um, they're beasts, but the flesh is really beautiful. What also makes the moray eel so special is that it's extremely fatty. It has this really thick layer of fat between the meat and the skin. Now, if you see how thick that is, that is fat. This is really beautiful. Basically, all eels are one of the most difficult things to fillet, the moray being a little even more difficult because of the skin. The skin is so thick, and once you penetrate that, you got to go through the fat. Once you go through the fat, then you get into the meat. So we leave the skin on here because um, it's so fatty. It's really nice. So this is how we're gonna serve it tonight. You, you skewer and you grill beforehand, okay? Once get cooked, we flip it over and we create what's called kobashi. It means roasty and toasty. So it gives that flavor once you simmer it. If you take a fish and you just boil it, it's not gonna be toasty, right? So you grill it and then boil it. Kobashi ni narimasu. Traditional nikke, no dashi, okay? Three parts sake, one soy sauce, one sugar. The most pivotal experience I had after culinary school was stepping foot into a three Michelin star restaurant by the name of George Blanc. That was just outside of Lyon, 26 chefs in the kitchen. Another very pivotal moment was the day I stepped foot into Ginza Sushiko, owned by Masa Takayama. I was the first uh, white guy to work for Masa. Wow, did he give me a whirlwind of what a Japanese kitchen is. And that's after working for multiple three Michelin star restaurants in France. I didn't know what was coming. Masa is a, a dazzling genius in the kitchen. So it was a great honor. Sea cucumber is a great delicacy found on the bottom of the ocean. It has extremely high umami content, has a beautiful texture, and is definitely one of my favorites. Texture is probably 50% important of the dish as the taste. In the Western world, it's probably about 90-10. Chinese, Japanese, probably 50-50. They really enjoy the texture. If you look at abalone, sea cucumber, these are textural wonders in which we're just not used to in the West. So the sea cucumber initially is very globuly and soft. It has zero texture to it at all. Once you start cleaning it, it starts tensing up because it's very firm. It's tensing up right now. It's defense mechanism. So after we open it up, there's the beak here, which, um, which is the only part that gets removed. So this is the beak right here. It's the opening of the sea cucumber. Pretty nice yield. This is all edible. Just that. Sea cucumber has a lot of umami, and if you cook it delicately in sake and kombu, both high umami content, and then you take it out, cut it, you simmer it with a little bit of dashi, 
There's a little bit of chew, oceanic flavor, um, melting in the mouth, and it's just, it's just really nice. So we have here the, uh, the large abalone from Chiba, which is just uh, east of Tokyo. How much are they? For both of them? We will never buy these again. Abalone is very rare in Japan, hence extreme price points, but the texture is uh, unbelievable. So the abalone has two sides. It has the deep side and the skinny side on the top. You actually come from the top side down. That is how you release it, from up here. You ride the shell down, very careful you don't cut the liver. Nice and clean. There it is. So what you're aiming for is no meat of any kind on the shell, and this is, as you know, mother of pearl. There's three main parts to the abalone. You have here the liver, and then you have the beard, and then you have the abalone itself. This is how we remove it. Very carefully, come from here. This get this beard. Now on the liver side, this gets removed. So this is the abalone of liver, very exotic, quite delicious. So the abalone liver is, um, has a very rich flavor and it has that moss green, probably because it eats so much kombu. At George Blanc, I had 24 chefs above me and you had to work your way up before you reach another level. At Masa, there was only three chefs, so uh, each person was extremely pivotal in the kitchen. When I was in these French kitchens, of course, I was the American, and yes, the French do uh, make fun of us in many ways, especially culinary-wise, so I had to kind of really put my head down and, and bust my ass. And then in Japanese cuisine, it was probably even more extreme because I am the white guy. You know, I don't speak the language and I'm just, I'm not Asian and all that stuff. It's been 90 minutes steaming. Come look. You can see if you wrap the plastic naturally, it, the suction creates a natural sous vide. This retains the flavor just packed in the concentrated liquid of the abalone, the sake and the kombu flavors. Iwatamaki is a very classic dish from uh, outside of Kyoto in which the burdock root is wrapped in unagi and then grilled and served with a tare. One of my favorite dishes, uh, very heartwarming and it's just a beautiful combination. The burdock smells like sweet soil. Just by scrubbing it, I get this amazing aroma coming out. The eel is a long seafood, burdock is a long root vegetable. One of the main differences of the Japanese kitchen is the actual knife. Now, the knife is holy in Japan, where in France the knife was important, but it was not even close to the importance. You know, the knife is paramount. And you have this gorgeous texture, and it's, you know, whoever came up with this, it's just, it's such a beautiful uh, combination, really. We're going to grill it right now. Sushi? Come on. Way more interesting if you ask me. Chimmy is defined as rare taste. Yeah, it's fermentation. Each chimmy is kind of treated differently. Regionally, all over Japan, there are different delicacies that is performed there. Most of chimmy uh, could be started by using salt and by pulling out moisture at the same time. I thought chinmu was important to include in the menu because it was a really important part of the culture and something that's, that's not really found here or even in Japan. If you look at uh, one of the oldest chinmu called nare zushi, which is a lacto-fermented fish in rice and salt and cured for many years, that was a chinmu. One of the things we're doing here is karasumi, which is the silver mullet that's cured in salt and lightly smoked in cherry wood, and that is cured for nine months. This is called tofu yo. What tofu yo is, is a tofu that we make fresh here, and then we dry it out a little bit in chunks. After it's dried out in these chunks, then we mix it with beni koji, which is a red koji, and awamori, and salt. 
It takes us about four months to, to age and cure this one. So there's a lot going on in here. We're keeping track on the times and the, the fermentation times of all these different products. As there's times where they really peak and then they start going down. So this is the oldest thing I have in here. This is a 12 year ginger. This was made in Japan when I used to live there. And then I brought it back on the plane. It's been in my fridge. This is all just Japan, his history of Japan. The importance of having somebody like Masa early on does a couple things to you. It sets the standard for what's to come after you were to leave somebody like him. It teaches you passion, heart. That's what I try to teach my guys every day. It's a Japanese abalone steamed in sake with a liver sauce. Having a good teacher is pretty much everything because you really are a subject of your environment. There's a reason why there's thousands of sushi chefs and masses at a certain high level because he just has more passion. He has more focus. He is just more determined, period. It's the uh, Iwatamaki, it's a unagi wrapped in burdock root with uh, Sancho Tare. Cooking's uh, created my personality in that I could be a little more detail-oriented than some of my friends or wife might want me to be. And having just extreme passion because of these masters that I've worked with. Here we have the moray eel, which is grilled and simmered Nitsuke style with fresh wasabi. It is important to be a mindful person because most people aren't. And people notice that. We have the uh, Santa Barbara sea cucumber, braised in sake. I think I would want my legacy to be a place that just serves honest, true Japanese cuisine, and that's it.